Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today we're working on our 2004 Volvo XC90 all-wheel drive, and I'm going to be replacing the radiator. It's going to be a very simple job. I can do it, you can do it too. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now with the hood's up, we're just going to open up this right here. This is your coolant reservoir. You want to make sure that your coolant is not hot. This vehicle's been sitting for a while, so I'm not worried about it. We'll set the cap aside and we can move along. Okay, so now that we're underneath the vehicle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get this out of here so we can get to the radiator that's located right here. It'll be very easy. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter. We're gonna take out this bolt, this bolt. There's one hiding up in here. And then the same thing for the other side of the vehicle. All 14s. We've got my air gun, 14 millimeter. You can use a ratchet if you want. Here's what my bolts look like. There's two long ones, and then the other four look the same. The two long ones were, of course, the two that were hiding. So we'll set this stuff aside. We can move along to the next step. Okay, so I grabbed a rubber mallet, just in case I need it, because uh, what we need to do, these arms right here, they kind of have like a, almost like this, that goes right up here, okay? So what we need to do is get this to go forward, and then come undone, and then come out. So I'm just gonna use my rubber mallet. Give it a couple bonks. Try to lift up. Okay. Just getting it to move is the hard part here because the way that these hooks are. There it is. Okay. Almost. <clears throat> Come on, baby. There we are. We got this out of here. Let's move ahead to the next step. Okay, so we've got our uh, recycling receptacle here. It's ready to catch the coolant that's gonna come out. Now what we need to do is drain the coolant. We're gonna come right up here, get a little petcock area. We're gonna turn this counterclockwise, that's to the left, with our 13 millimeter socket, and we should have coolant get ready to come out of this. Getting close here, probably gonna make a mess. Safety glasses, hand protection, here we go. Cool. We'll just let this do its thing and we'll move along. So now that we have the coolant drained, we're gonna move along. We're gonna take out this bolt right here and this one right here. So we'll grab our 10 millimeter. That's what our bolt looks like. This bolt right here just goes down through this plate and it goes in and this shaft right here kind of goes into a, a slot in the radiator. Keeps it from moving around. There's those two bolts. They're both the exact same. We can set these aside and move along. So now we're gonna take the clamp off of the upper radiator hose to the radiator. To do that, I'm gonna use a seven millimeter socket and my quarter inch ratchet. If you think you can do it with a screwdriver, you can also try with a flathead screwdriver. With these clamps, you don't have to loosen them up all the way to the point that they come apart. You just loosen them up enough so you can slide them up the hose a little bit and you can get the hose off of the radiator. Feels pretty loose. Let's grab the hose, give it a wiggle. There we are. There's our clamp. This one looks like it's reusable. If you don't think it is, then you'd want to replace it. This one looks decent. I'll set it aside. On to the next step. Okay, so we're going to remove this 10 millimeter headed bolt and this 10 millimeter headed bolt. That's going to make it so we can move this out of our way. Both are the exact same. We'll set these aside and we'll reuse them later. So we'll grab this. Give it a little wiggle. It's just got this end right here, which slides into the box. Air comes up through here, into your air box, goes through the air filter, and into the intake. We'll set this aside. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, we're just gonna come over here. We're gonna take off whatever we can 
off of our fan shroud unit here. Let's get that unclipped. There's another clip down lower. It looks like it's a little harder to get to. I'm just gonna use this uh, forky tool and it's gonna essentially go around the clip and then I'm gonna pop it up. There it is. Okay, that's loose. Get that out of the way. We've got some wiring here. Looks like we're just gonna grab right here, give it a squeeze, lift it straight up. We always take a look at our electrical connectors. Make sure there's no funny colors in there. Anything besides metal color is not so great, in which case you'd want to get a terminal cleaning kit. This one looks fine. So we'll just set that aside for now. We'll come across the top up here. Get this clip off of here. Keep coming across this clip. Should be able to get this under there. There we go. This one. Come on. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are cruising. This one. Yeah. Cool. So we get this right here. We got a little push tab. We're gonna squeeze it, separate these two. There we are. Take a look at our connector. Looks great. Looks great. Set this stuff aside. Following this one down, looks like it goes down and away. So it's not connected to the radiator shroud at all, or fan shroud, I should say. Okay, so let's take a look at our new radiator here and just go over what we're looking at in the vehicle. Since we can't see all this, we'll look at this. You've got your upper radiator hose here, right? That's already off. You're gonna have a mounting bolt up here one right up here, and that's for your fan shroud. Once you take out those two bolts, the fan shroud just slides right into these hooks right here. There's one right there, and there's one located over there. So essentially the fan shroud will just go up and out, and then it'll be off of the radiator once you take out the two bolts up top. You can't get to these, because they're up and behind this thing. So we'll get to those after we take out these bolts right here, which is what holds the radiator in. Okay, there's gonna be a big bolt right here and one over on this side. This area right here, a bolt's gonna come through from the forward end, and this is very visible from down in the bottom, from the front of the vehicle. It's gonna come through right here. And then this one right here, the bolt comes through from the inside the engine compartment this way, and then screws into a nut cert right over here. And it'll be about the same on this side. You got your lower hose. You've got the other hoses right here that we're gonna disconnect. You've got your little hooky-do there for the uh, fan shroud. This right here, oh, this one right here, sorry. Right there, that's where the bolt's gonna come through. And then this one right here has the bolt that comes through this way. So that's pretty much the basics of it, just so you have an idea of what we're looking at inside the vehicle, which you can't really see very well. We'll set this aside and we'll continue. Okay, so now we're just gonna spray down the lines. This area right here where the line goes in. And then the same on the lower side. Just a little bit of penetrant goes a long way here. It's gonna help us out down the line. We'll let that do its job and we'll continue with ours. So I'm gonna go for my 10 millimeter bolt. Get my tool on there. So I'm screwing it from right back here. There we are. Get tool out of here. There's our bolt, very long. I'll probably clean this up before I go ahead and put it back in there. We'll set this aside. We'll do the other side of the vehicle. It's right down in here. It's the same thing, 10 millimeter. Bolt number two. Looks the same as the first, an exception of, well, it's just not rusted up. No big deal. We'll set this aside with the other one and we can move along to the next step. So we've got our line that goes into the radiator. There's a little green clip here. 
The way these work is you squeeze the tabs, something like that, and then you should be able to grab the line at the same time as those tabs being squeezed. Wiggle and pull at the same time, and it should want to slide out of the radiator. So let's give that a try. Get this stuff out of the way. See about grabbing that. There we are. We'll set that aside. We'll do the same to the other hose. All right, so I'm grabbing this lower hose here. I'm giving it a twist. It moves around fairly easily. So that's always nice. If it doesn't, just spray it again and keep trying to wiggle it. Put my flashlight down there. I'm gonna squeeze those two green clips or ears on the clip and I'm gonna try to pull this out. There we are. Came right out. A Little bit of oil comes out. Goes right into our collection bucket there. Okay, so we're gonna take off this lower clamp right here and that's for the uh, lower radiator hose to the radiator. I'm just gonna use my flathead. I'm gonna get this fairly loose. I don't wanna keep going till the clamp comes completely apart. It's not about that. It's just getting it loose from the hose so I can move it and I can get the hose off of the radiator. That's all I need to do. There we are. Slide that up and out of the way. We know we got plenty of room there. Let's go like this. We might have coolant coming out. Um, you know, even though we drained it, you never really know. So of course, hand protection, eye protection, super important. You can keep your mouth closed while you do this. There it is. Clamp off of there. We're gonna use a T27 to remove this bolt right here. That's what the tool looks like. It's a little star. Right up on there. This is the bracket that holds this line still. Get that bolt out of there. We'll set it aside. Just give this thing a little wiggle. Okay. So now we have a 10 millimeter over here. We have another 10 millimeter over here. And then of course, the ones over on the other side. So let's grab a 10 and we'll continue. Use my 10 up here. Doesn't give me very much room for a ratchet with a socket. Um, if you have a ratcheting wrench, it might come in handy. Or even just a regular wrench, I guess, but that would take quite a while probably. So this line right here, it's just in a little, uh, little clamp that goes like this. The line comes up through. I'm gonna try to pop that out of there. There we are. That's gonna give us a little bit more room to get in here with our 10 millimeter. We're just gonna continue so we get this bolt all the way out. This bolt is almost ready to come out. There we are. So we're actually gonna take that bolt and I'm just gonna put it in a thread or two here. And that's just to hold this from moving around so I can uh, take the other bolt out on the other side there. So there's another 10 millimeter bolt here. The reason why I put the bolt in on the other side is just so this thing isn't flopping around. Makes this a little bit easier for me. This bolt, it's out. Once we take this out, this is gonna be able to flop down. This is gonna be able to flop down. So watch your face. Make sure you're wearing your eye protection. Safety first is the number one concern here at 1A Auto. Bolt number two. I'll let these down nice and easy here. There we are. There's our two bolts. They're the exact same. We'll set these aside and we'll continue. Okay, so you've got this plastic thing right here on the passenger side of the radiator. Directly above it, there's another 10 millimeter head bolt that holds your uh, AC condenser to the radiator. I'm just gonna remove that bolt using a 10 millimeter. There we go, just get this bolt out of here. Should just slide right through. There's our bolt. So we made our way over to the driver's side now. We're gonna do the same thing. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt that goes through the condenser. You wanna be careful for uh, any dripping fluids. The side would have oil and uh, coolant dripping down. So wear your eye protection and your hand protection. Get this bolt out of here. I'm assuming it should look like the first. Just wiggle stuff around. All right, so here's the bolt from the left side. Looks the same as the passenger. 
So we'll just set it aside with the other one. So we've got one bolt right here and then one over on the driver's side. And those are gonna be the last two bolts that are holding this radiator in. Aside from that, there might be a little bit of finagling that's gonna go on to try to get the, um, the ears on the radiator to maneuver around other things. So I'm gonna use my 12 millimeter socket and I just got it on an air gun, but you can use a ratchet if you need to. That's what our bolt looks like. We'll set this aside. Driver's side, same thing. Okay, so everything's working its way down here. So I'm gonna leave this in. I'm gonna grab something to support this real quick. Okay, so I went and grabbed a pole jack here. You can use whatever you've got, but essentially all I'm doing is applying very light um, pressure to the AC condenser over here and to the turbo intercooler. Literally, no pressure, I'm not crushing it or anything. I'm just kind of holding it up. So when I take out this last bolt for the radiator, the radiator's gonna wanna come down and the, uh, the intercooler and the AC condenser will wanna stay up. Going back to using my 12 millimeter here. Oops, throw that there. There's our bolt. Looks exact same as the one on the passenger side. So we'll put them together as a pair. We're just gonna wiggle it around. I'm gonna drain out the rest of this coolant real quick into our recycling receptacle. We'll wait for that to finish up and then we'll continue. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna continue wiggling this thing around. We're gonna move this out of the way. Okay. Oops, got some more coolant coming down. That's nice. That's special. You can think you have all the coolant out. I'm gonna see if I can get this out of the way. So let's let this down a little bit here. It's gonna give us a little bit of uh, wiggle room for everything that's gonna be happening here. We're gonna get our safety glasses on, make sure we're safe. Safety is the number one concern here at 1A Auto. And uh, we're just gonna see if we can wiggle the radiator down past the intercooler. relentless amount of coolant that's coming out of this. Okay. All right. So now that we've got the radiator down a little bit and the fan shroud, we can see up here, we've got our hose. This is an overflow hose. Comes all the way up here and connects into your reservoir. So we wanna make sure that we have this separated so when we lower the radiator down further, um, it won't be hanging from this, essentially. And it could be easy to forget this because while the radiator is mounted in, this is underneath this right here and it's impossible to see and get to. Pull that up like that. Work on it in my terms here, which is up where I'm comfortable. Slide that all the way up there, out of the way. Get my flashlight out of your way. I'm just gonna twist the two hoses, separate them. There we are. Take a look at the hose. Doesn't look cracked. I'd say it's reusable. We'll set this aside and put it right up where we can find it make sure that we put it back together. We've got the other end of the hose that can just do whatever it wants to do. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this bolt right here and then the other one on the other side of the fan shroud all the way over here. And that's gonna make it so we can lift the fan shroud up and away from the radiator and get that out of the way. I'm just gonna get our light over here. I've got my 10 millimeter. <laughs> Okay, there's our bolt. Nothing too special about it. We'll set it aside. Now we're gonna do the same to this side over here. So we got all this stuff right here. Just try to push it out of your way. We don't want it to get caught on anything. Now we're just gonna grab the fan shroud 
and try to pull it up maybe about half an inch to an inch. Slide it away. On the bottom of the radiator or the lower end of the radiator, you got like these little hooky doos that go like this. And then your fan shroud just goes, sits in there, just like that, okay? So it's kind of latched in down here just by sitting there. And then up top is where those two bolts were that we just took out. Now that we took those out, we'll slide the radiator, I mean the fan shroud up, and then slide it away from the radiator, and then we can take it out of there. And so we'll just lift it up. There we are. If it's easier, you could try to go back underneath now. And uh, cause what we need to do is lift it up and then also move it away from the radiator. There it is, that just slid down quite a bit. This side slid down quite a bit as well. Cool beans. All right, let's go back underneath and we'll get it out of there. Okay, we're back underneath. As you can tell, the fan shroud's making its way down like we were hoping that it would. Um, there's a little catch on the radiator on this side. So I'm just gonna go like that. And I'm gonna help the fan shroud come down by pressing the radiator towards the front of the vehicle and pulling the cooling fan down. Get this hose holding us up. There's our fan. We'll set this aside. Here we go. So we're gonna come over here, grab onto our radiator again, and uh, just try to finagle it out of here. We're gonna do whatever we can to make magic happen. We got more coolant coming out of this thing. Unbelievable how much coolant's coming out of it. What's this up here? We can just get it to work its way. What's holding it up is these hoses for the intercooler. <clears throat> and what I'm hoping to do, which is not gonna happen as I'm looking at it closer, is weasel it down past them, past the hoses for the intercooler. So what it looks like is we're gonna have to take off the clamps for the hose for the intercooler. We'll just do one side and uh, take that off of there. We'll just have to make sure we have it cleaned up nice and the clamp is nice and tight when we go to reconnect it because uh, that's gonna be your boost pressure and everything going through there. Okay, so we have our hose for our intercooler, comes right over to here. Down here's the clamp that I was talking about. I'm just gonna use a flathead. I'll probably use a socket to tighten it back up so I can make sure I have it nice and snug. I'm just gonna loosen up this clamp. I'm not gonna um, take it completely apart or anything. Boy, the screwdriver's gonna aggravate me. You can use your socket. It's a seven millimeter. Get it on there. Turn it to the left so it's nice and loose. You don't want to take it completely apart. It's kind of a pain in the butt to put back together once you get it all the way apart. We just want it loose enough that the hose can come off. There shouldn't be any fluid in here. You might see a little bit of oil. Um, theoretically, it would be best if there was no fluid at all in there. Um, if there was oil, you would have a problem with your turbo. Um, on thing. Okay. Just get this off of here. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to take my radiator, pull it further over there. And now, get this hose out of here. Okay. All right. Let's go back down bottom. All right. I'm just gonna keep on working this down here. More coolant's coming out, of course. There we are, just get the rest of this coolant out of here. And there's our radiator. Okay, so we're gonna take off this clamp right here. 
This is a non-reusable clamp, so we're just gonna go ahead and use some cutters. Snip that off of there. Get my radiator to stay still. There we are. Get that clamp off of there. Pull our hose off. We'll set this aside and we can move along. So here we are, friends, a quick product comparison for you. Over here, we have our radiator out of our 2004 Volvo XC90 all-wheel drive version. We just took it out. It was eh, not so simple, but whatever. Over here is our brand new quality 1A Auto Part. Both these parts are created equally. They've got the same shapes and dimensions, which is super important. You want to make sure you have the same width and length. All right. You want to also make sure you have the same connection ports. You got your oil cooler line areas right here. These plastic things just pop right out of there. You got your hooky doos for your cooling fan right there. Up here is where we're gonna mount those screws into. We've got the hardware came with it as well. You've got your cooling hose area there and a lower hose area here. Aside from that, you got a couple little ears here. Those are the mounting ears to hold it up to the body of the vehicle. It's got everything you need to install into the vehicle. With all that said, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a quality part to install into the vehicle, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. All right, so before we go ahead and install our brand new quality 1A Auto radiator, I just want to show you something on the original one. You see how nasty and dirty this is? All these right here are little cooling fins where air is supposed to be able to get rushed through. They're supposed to uh, cool down the engine coolant, basically by letting air get blown through. It cools down all these little fins, which in turn cools down all these little tubes that run from this channel over to that channel, back and forth. All these are supposed to let air go through. When they get all clogged up with dirt and debris like this one is, as you can tell, this one's really nasty. It limits the amount of air getting rushed through it, so it's gonna limit the ability for your vehicle to be able to cool down the cooling system, which in turn is gonna mean that your engine's gonna run hotter. Uh, you probably get a little bit worse fuel economy. Um, if we turn this over, which would be the forward side of the radiator, you can tell it's even worse. This is just absolutely nasty. Um, this radiator's hurting for sure. And uh, I think it's ready to be recycled at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and install our brand new quality 1A Auto radiator. I just wanted to show you the difference on this, old to new. So we're gonna take this off. This just slides, easy peasy. It's just a little rubber uh, air damper. And we're gonna put it onto our new radiator. We'll get this one out of the way. Okay, so we're just gonna take our rubber. We're gonna go right along this lip right here. And essentially it just rides right inside this groove. Okay, there really isn't anything to it. Not much to explain, so I'm not gonna over explain it. Just put it on there, try to get it to stay. Okay, so we got our radiator. We're gonna bring it up and just try to weasel it all up in there. This is gonna be interesting. Probably about as much fun as taking it out. Um, so prepare yourself. If you haven't eaten anything, go have a little snack and just take your time on it because it's gonna test you. We've got wiring. That's gotta get out of the way. As we're pushing up, you need to be careful not to grab onto these fins. Um, if you happen to peen a couple of them over, it's really not a big, big deal. But I mean, if you go ahead and write some initials in there, you know, I love Len or whatever you're into, um, it's gonna restrict airflow. So, you know, I wouldn't do it on the radiator if you're gonna do it. You could put it on your license plate. I'm just gonna see if I can get this up in here. I love it, I love the fight. There we are, cool. All right. Cool. Just keep wiggling it and working it until it goes up to where you need it. I'm gonna leave that just like this for now. And I'm gonna grab my mounting bolts that go through the radiator and up. We'll get those started. We're not gonna tighten them up yet. We're gonna grab our fan shroud. We're gonna do the bolt side up. And then of course these areas right here, that's gonna go into the hooks on the radiator once we get it up in there. All right.
So here's that piece. That needs to go right down inside here. So it's not completely set in there yet. So I'm just gonna kinda try to wiggle it around. See if I can get it so it's lined up. It needs to be lined up on both sides to slide in right. So this side just slid in. And this side has to be close at this point. There it is. That's in. We'll double check this side. Yep, it's in, feels good. Cool, all right, let's bring the vehicle down. We're gonna put in the mounting bolts for the top of the fan to the radiator, and then we'll go ahead and put this up. Okay, so our brand new quality 1A Auto radiator came with some mounting hardware. This stuff isn't trash, you need this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it right over to the radiator, and on the ear, where the fan shroud connects onto. Let's see if I can lift it up. Hopefully we can see it, there you are. Okay, see the ear right here? I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna slide it from the outside facing in. I'm also gonna have this little nub facing towards the inside of this hole right here. So it's flat on the fan uh, mounting area. So it's gonna go just like that, all right? We'll do the same over on the driver's side. Okay, so now we're gonna take our bolts. We have one that looks just like it for the driver's side as well. It's gonna go right through the uh, fan assembly there and then into the little clip we just put in there. We'll get that started. Do the same thing to the driver's side. Both of these are started in, so now we're just gonna go ahead and snug these right up. I'm using my 10 millimeter. That's bottomed out. Give it a teeny bit more and off to the driver's side. Same thing. Snug it a teeny bit more. On to the next step. There we are, bottomed. Teeny bit. That off of there. Very nice. Okay, so we remember we're taking this hose off the radiator. We removed the clamp. The clamp was a one time use only. So I'm going to go with something as basic as this. We're gonna use this. I'm just gonna go right around the hose. Get it to approximately the same size. That's pretty great. We'll cut off some of the excess here. We're gonna run this inside there, up along the top of the radiator. I'm gonna slide the hose right onto this little piton right there, okay? There we are, looks good. Twist it so it's facing towards me. Slide it on there the best I can. Now we want to make sure we get this as tight as possible without breaking the ear off the radiator. So I'm just going to use these needle nose pliers or long nose pliers, whatever you want to call them. Once I know I've got it tight, trim off the excess and we'll continue by connecting the rest of that hose. Okay, so we've got this. Just gonna go right on here. We'll grab our clamp. It's made its way all the way down over there. Bring it up here. We're gonna get it settled back in right to where it belonged. You can see where it was before. That's where I'm gonna line it up with now. So I'm gonna use this right here. Squeeze on my clamp. Watch your fingers, of course, because uh, these clamps are spring, spring clamps, and uh, they like to snap on you. Give you a little pinch, it'll wake you up for sure. Looks like I can turn it a little bit. There we are. That looks pretty great. Very nice. This is gonna come right along here. It's gonna sit inside this right here on your um, fan housing. You can see where the marks are on the hose. So we'll just slide it in there. This one, just slide it in. There we are. It can't go anywhere now. We can move along to the next step. I've got my mounting bolts here. I'm just gonna start lifting everything up and try to get it up to where it's gonna go. Um, I'll actually grab my pole jack. Well, let's try it by hand first real quick. Let's see if we can get it to play nice. And if not, we'll grab a jack of some sort. I'll probably grab my pole jack, but if you're working on the ground, which would be pretty much impossible for this job, 
Um, and just use whatever you've got. Maybe a regular jack or something. Need to get my bolt lined up with my hole there. So I'm just gonna use my pole jack here. Slowly bring this up. If it feels like it's binding on anything, of course I'll slow down. Feels like I still got plenty to go here. So I'm not worried about that. This is just gonna make it easier for me to get my bolts up in there. Um, let the pole jack do all the hard work here. A little wiggle. Okay, it's getting a little stiffer now. So, let's just figure out what's holding this up. So it looks like it's pretty close to wanting to go in. This needs to come down. Okay, let's see. So these two pieces stay exactly like that. We just need the radiator to be able to go up a little bit higher. lined up. That feels pretty good. We'll grab the other bolt for the other side. Looks pretty good over here too. That's nice. We'll get these up in there a little bit more and we won't tighten them down yet until we get everything else situated and then we'll go about tightening everything up at once. Okay, that one's still up loose, but up there. This one. Just set this aside, we can move along. So we've got these. They're just gonna go down here now. We've got one for the passenger side, right there. And then one for the driver's side, all the way over on the other side. So the way that I'm putting these, you'll have the, um, the little piton coming out. That goes into the center area. And the flat edge is facing outward where the uh, this is all gonna connect into. All right, so we got those in there. Now we can start lining everything up and uh, get some bolts started, and then we'll start tightening everything up. Okay, so we've got our bolt. I'm gonna try to bring it through this hole, through the hole that's through here, and then into the nutted end that's on the AC condenser. You might have to wiggle everything around a little bit. Just see if we can get it to work for us. Get that bolt started and good. We're just gonna do the same to the other side and then we'll snug them up. All right, it's getting pretty snug here. There it is, it's bottomed out. Just give it a teeny bit more. That one's tight, we'll do the same to the driver's side. Okay, that's snug. Let's give it a teeny bit more. That's that. Let's move along to the next step. We're gonna go ahead and snug up this bolt right here. It's a 12 millimeter. Do the same to the passenger side. Tight. Let's move along. All right, so we're just gonna line this up. Make sure it lines up with the, uh, the nut certs there that we put in. Looks like if I line that one up, this one's too far in and vice versa. So we're just gonna try to get them lined up. If they don't line up, you can just use a screwdriver. Give it a nice little bonk. Push them a little bit so they're wherever they need to be to line up. 
once you have these lined up, which it looks like they are pretty well, grab the power steering cooler here. This is gonna go up as well. That goes on the outside. Put the hose is up inside the bumper there at one of my bolts. You can pick whichever side you want to start with. You do you, boo-boo. I'm just gonna go with this one. Get that started. We're gonna do the same to this side. In there. All right, now that we have both those started, we can go ahead and snug them up. We're gonna use our 10 millimeter. Use a ratchet or whatever you've got, but it's a 10 millimeter. Okay, it's bottomed out, a teeny bit. On to the next side. Do the same thing over here. Okay, it's bottomed out. Let's give it a little bit more. Both those bolts are tight. We can move on to the next step. So now we're gonna install this bolt right here. It's the Torx one. You're gonna use your T27. It just goes right in the side of the radiator right here and holds these lines secure. Just get it lined up. Start it in there. Use my T27. Okay, that's bottomed out. There we are. That's tight. All right, so we're just gonna clean up our oil cooler line here. We'll get, so these uh, gaskets are nice and clean. There we are. Looks pretty good. Try to clean up this green locking clip here for good practice. This line right here is gonna go right inside this, which is right above where the lower hose goes into. Okay, it's gonna be very easy. Bring it around, line it up with your hole. Give it a little wiggle. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to squeeze it and push it in, and I'm gonna try to get it so that little ear of this is bottomed out against this end of the plastic, and these little clippy-doos are inside there. Sure, I'm gonna give it a little wiggle here. Now I'm gonna give it a tug. <clears throat> oh yeah, tight. All right, so we got this cooler line from up top now, just like the lower one. We're gonna clean it off so it looks nice. Check the gaskets, those still look great. The radiator still got its little plug in it. I'm just gonna take this, same as the lower part. I'm just gonna work it in there, give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's rotating nice. Give it a nice tug. Make sure it's locked in there. Very nice. We've got our electrical connector here. We've got our two locking ends. Just gonna clip it in. It's gonna go right here. I'm gonna take this one. It's gonna go right up in here. It's kind of hiding. You might forget that it's there. We've got our electrical connectors. Bring this around, put it there. This right here, here. Go right down there. You can see you got the big, uh, widely separated prongs, and then the smaller ones. It's going to match up inside here. The smaller ones basically face towards the engine, and the bigger, wider separated ones are towards the front of the vehicle. This just tucks right in here, just like that. That's very nice. We have our intercooler hose. Try to make sure we get any crud out that might have went inside the intercooler there. I'm just gonna slide it right on. We're gonna snug up this clamp now. I'm using my seven millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet. And the reason why I'm using a, rat, uh, a socket and a ratchet over the screwdriver is just so I can get better grip on this. Doesn't give you much room to get in here. I'm gonna try taking off that extension. Oh yeah, then he likes. Make sure that hose is on there as far as it can go, of course. You want to make sure you have great contact with the hose to the intercooler. Just double check. It's like if I could push it up like that. Just like that. Okay, looks like it's definitely on there. Just want to make sure before I continue to tighten. Feels like it's getting snug. When I'm tightening, I'm only tightening with one finger here just to make sure that I don't over tighten. 
It's very easy to do with these clamps, and once you do, they're garbage. That feels pretty good. Give my hose a little wiggle. It's going nowhere. Clamp's nice and tight. We can move ahead to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna grab our hose, grab our hose clamp. We wanna take a look and see which way is gonna be the best way to put this clamp. So when we get the hose on there, we'll be able to tighten it up. There's lots of different ways you can put it. Some of them are gonna be worse than the original way Volvo had them on there. Um, so I'll probably just put it just like this and I'll see if I can get my ratchet in there. So I'm gonna put this under here, put this on there, just like that. I'm just gonna put it right up onto the hose, put my hose onto the radiator. Should just work its way on. I like to wiggle it. There we are. Just take a look. I need a light. All right. Looks like it's all the way on, all the way around the neck of the radiator there. That's super important. You wanna make sure that it's all the way on. We'll get our clamp, bring it on over. All right. Once you get it so it's getting pretty snug and it's not wobbling around crazy, you just wanna make sure that you have it parallel to the end of the hose. That looks pretty great. We'll continue snugging it up with our seven millimeter. Okay, it's bottomed out. Let's give it a teeny bit more. Tight. Give it a little wiggle. That feels great. Awesome. All right, I'm just gonna get my hose clamp started on here so it's close to where it needs to be. Bring our lower hose up. I'm gonna get it onto the lower portion of the radiator there. Slides right on. All right. Just slide right over that. Once again, you wanna make sure it's flush. Make sure your hose is all the way up against the radiator as far as it can go. And make sure when you put your clamp on, you don't have it very close to the edge. And you also don't have it past the edge of the, uh, the tubing that comes out of the radiator. That looks pretty good right about there. I'm just gonna snug this right up. Tight. Just putting a little bit of Copper Never Seize on there gonna help it come off down the line. So on the skid plate, you've got these little uh, pitons that come down into right in between here. And so this part right here sits up on the subframe area, right up here. So that piton's gonna come up and then sit down into its groove right up along the top up there. So if you're struggling, you're getting it over, but it's just not doing its thing, it's because that thing needs to slide down in right there. All right, so let's get this up here. I'm gonna go at an angle. I'm gonna try to do one side at a time. Go under there, up over that. Bring this around. Up this way. Give that a little push. Bonk. There we are. Those little pitons came right down into the subframe like what we wanted them to do. All of our bolt holes are lined up. Let's grab some bolts and get it in. All right, so we've got our bolts. We've got four of these, two of these. These two are the same. They're the same as those two over there. Let's get those started in. I'm just gonna start all these in. We're not gonna tighten anything down until they're all started. I'm gonna use a 14 with my extension, just so I can get up in here. Now that they're all started, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. All right, all six are tight. Easy peasy. All right, so we have our air dam. This is where the air gets pulled in right up through here, into the air box, filtered, metered, drawn into the engine, burnt. This is super important. You need to make sure you put it back in. There's a slot where this square connects into in the bottom of the box. 
same place we took it out of is where it's going to go in. Slides right in, just like that. Take your two bolts. Now that we have them both started, we'll go ahead and snug them up. There we are. Easy peasy. Okay, so when we're filling the coolant, generally speaking, you'd want to apply vacuum, add coolant that way, because that'll make it so it draws coolant into all the areas inside the cooling system. If you don't have access to a, a vacuum system to be able to fill the coolant, you're just going to have to slowly top it off. Um, it's going to work its way in. Once it gets up so it looks like it's full, run the vehicle for a little bit. It's going to draw down. Just keep adding. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses as you're doing it. Once it gets hot, uh, anything can happen in there. You're going to want to run it for a little while because it's going to burp out a lot of air through this system. There's you know, the heater core, you got all your coolant hoses, you got the inside of the engine, all sorts of areas where this coolant's going to need to go. Once you get it so it's running and it's burped out all its air, you just make sure it's at its topped off level. Take your cap, screw it right on there, and down the road you go. Easy peasy. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.